I've heard a lot of people say Hulk 2003 versus The Incredible Hulk from The Avengers, but I think I should wait until Thor Ragnarok comes out before I start that video. Gubs, can you do Hulk versus Hulk, please? Hey, Gubs, you should Hulk do 2003 Hulk versus, versus 2017. Come on, Gubs, Daddy. Do Hulk versus Hulk versus 2008 Hulk, Hulk versus 2012 is thick silver. The Incredible Hulk is most notably known as the physically strongest Avenger out there. And in the past 40 years, we've had about three live-action adaptations of the Green Puffle. You had Lou Ferrigno's, Eric Bana's, and Edward Norton's, and Mark Ruffalo's. Now you may be wondering why I said three adaptations, even though I only stated four names. That's because Edward Norton's Hulk and Mark Ruffalo's Hulk are technically the same person. The 2008 Incredible Hulk movie took place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it's referenced to quite a bit in the 2012 Avengers film. I didn't see an end, so I put a bullet in my mouth, and the other guy spit it out. Thanks, but the last time I was in New York, I kind of broke Harlem. <laughs> Meaning that these two are the same character. I mean, they don't even look that different. And look at them. If you squint one eye and squint the other eye, there you go, they're like twinning right now. Plus, the old Grandpa Ross dude from nine years ago came back to play the same guy in Civil War. So all of their abilities are being combined into one Hulk. For today, we're gonna be comparing the green CGI Brock Lesnar to the Marvel Studios leaf-colored gorilla. A heads up as always, this video is not meant to argue who was the better actor, or which was the better film, but rather which incarnation would murder which Hulk in a fight. Yeah, you've gotten to that side of YouTube. This isn't Screw Attack, pal. I don't get paid to do animation. Spoilers for every Marvel movie ever, including Thor Ragnarok. To measure each Hulk's pros and cons, we're gonna break down each of their strength, speed, intellect, endurance, and abilities. First category is up, so let's actually do something for once. The first thing people usually think of when thinking about the Hulk is super strength. And when looking at these two corn mascots from afar, it looks like there is a huge difference in terms of strength. I mean, look at this meathead. He towers over this eggplant like Dwayne Johnson does to Kevin Hart. But in terms of strength, size doesn't always mean everything. And no, that's not what she said, because if it is, then my video would be demonetized. Let's just overanalyze everything the way your nerdy self likes it. We're just gonna skim the 2003 movie to everyone's favorite part. This Hulk is most notoriously known for tearing apart and tossing away an M1 Abrams tank like an expired taco. The first part wasn't that impressive to many. I mean, don't get me wrong, tearing off the top half of the tank like that takes a real beefcake, requiring 15 tons of force. But the audience was much more wowed of how far this dude chucked that thing. There are people out there that exaggerate this feat, detailing that he threw it into the sun or that he tossed it across several miles, but we can't trust those unsighted hyperbolic statements. Trusting those kinds of plagiarists is like jumping in the deep end of the pool when you don't even know how to swim. Gratefully, numerous amounts of authors on the Hyper Textbook webpage actually worked out the whole physics side of things behind this absurdly ripped Hercules, and calculated the distance of how far he threw the artillery. So thanks Jason Liu, Anthony Ho, and Simon Chen. Shoutouts to you for actually doing this. This Hulk actually has three different settings for strength and size in the 2003 movie. His weakest form at 9 feet, his medium form at 12 feet, and his super sane form at 15 feet. With this being twice the size of Shaquale Onale, it's safe to say that this was done in his 15 foot stage. In other words, his strongest state. The mathletes concluded that Banner threw the tank 420 meters away. But with that much weight and acceleration, that would have taken 131.5 tons of force. That trumps everything the Hulk has done in the 2008 movie, including the lifting of the Humvee and the tickle punches he threw at the Abomination. So yeah, I'd have to say this Hulk would take the win in strength if the Avengers didn't come out half a decade ago. Hulk was able to stop this little fella dead in its tracks in the Battle of New York. And sure, it wasn't going that fast, about 22 miles per hour, but that thing weighs thousands of tons. Scaling the biggest mammal on the planet, the blue whale, alongside this Hemoth, that would make this beautiful face not only a mother could love, 1200 tons. But that isn't even taking into account that slim, thick armor. It's not those skinny human 1 16th thick steel armor. No, 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 no. This is straight up some $5 footlong stuff. Since those plates get smaller as you go down the animal, then that'd make the thing at least 12,000 tons. Meaning this Hulk would have had to dish out nearly 2,000 tons of force with one punch to stop this worm thing in six seconds. That completely obliterates the abilities from the one from a decade and a half ago. Some people will mention that the tank throw wasn't Banna's best strength showcase, as he threw a 100 ton boulder across a body of water. But still, even that is only a tenth of what the Hulk did with that one inch punch. You're probably still in doubt and might think I'm pulling BS out of the place where the sun don't shine, but okay, 
let's go your way. Let's see what the movie makers had to say. On the IMDb trivia page for the 2003 Hulk movie, there's a tidbit stating that the visual effects artists themselves said that Banner's Hulk was capable of exerting 14 tons of force per square inch. This is unsighted, so I'm not sure if this is even true. If anything, it sounds like I know a guy who knows a guy who saw this woman mouth the words he can't. But let's just roll with it to please your insecure neediness. The way they phrase everything else suggests that this is the strongest force he can exert. Here, let me read it to you how it's basically written. His skin is 10 times as strong as Kevlar. Bench is so much he got a 208 inch chest, 130 inch waist, 51 inch foot, 81 inch neck. That's gross, but okay. If you ever sized his foot, it would be an 87, and he can exert 14 tons of pressure per square inch. I'm assuming this is a typo, and it's meant to say force, not pressure, because pressure is already measured in square inches. This unit of measure is different from the one we used in measuring Hulk's punch against the Leviathan, so we can't simply compare these two. I mean, we can, but that's just a lot of conversions. But what we can do is compare it to something that wasn't really in the movies, but sort of was. In the TV show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 2, Episode 15, we see a room with vibranium walls that was originally built to contain the Hulk by Bruce Banner himself. But we see a turkey-sized fist dent on the wall, suggesting that Hulk went ham on that thing. Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. isn't a movie, but it still takes place within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the same world this Hulk resides. It's never specified just how strong Vibranium truly is. Vibranium is like your loyalty to this channel, it doesn't exist. What we're basically only given is that it's stronger than steel but only a third of its weight. So for the bare minimum of Ruffalo's Hulk's power, let's use real world steel. The ultimate tensile strength of steel is about 420 megapascals, meaning that Ruffalo's Hulk had to exert a force much higher than that of 30 tons per square inch, more than twice the value of Eric Bana's. Whether you take the things shown in the movies or the unsighted quotes from the filmmakers, Norton Ruffalo's Hulk clearly takes the win here. Sure, you might be saying that the 2003 Hulk actually grows taller as he gets angrier, but that goes more under the abilities section, not the strength. You know what? Let's be a little unorthodox this time and go cut straight to the ability section. Screw transitions. Who needs them anyways? Like I said earlier, this is gonna veer in a little more different direction from the first category. We're talking less about strength and more about the abilities Hulk gets as he gets angrier. The Ruffalo and Norton Hulk did indeed get stronger as he got angrier, such as gaining the upper hand against the Abomination back in 08, and almost finessing your boy Iron Man when he was whammon handled by the Scarlet Witch. This is probably the angriest we've ever seen him, as his eyes were full on bloodshot red. Some might say he was angrier for a long time in Ragnarok, but we're not talking about how long he was mad for. We're talking about how utterly pissed off he was. Time length isn't considered. Like, look at him! If you see this fool looking at you like that, you don't want to mess with him. He didn't seem to gain other abilities aside from strength, but the 2003 Hulk grew in height as well as power, meaning that he gained more mass as well. He did have his limits. He didn't seem to get any bigger than 15 feet. When he was screaming underwater, telling his dad off in some unknown dialect, he was overloading his dad with energy, implying that this was indeed his 110% peak. So he can't really grow beyond that of 15 feet. And as I said earlier, his top strength still didn't exceed that of Ruffalo's Hulk. But that height and weight enhancement could give him that edge on something. Maybe he could like belly flop on him or something. He also gets a visible healing factor, one that immediately helps him recover within seconds from flesh wounds. But stronger beings like Gamma Dogs might pose a problem to him that outreaches beyond his healing factor. Regardless, Banna smashes in this category. Did that sound wrong? We're back to going in order of everything. Sorry, not sorry. Coupling super speed with super strength is like the quintessential best combo of superpowers. Just gonna be straight up with you, the 2003 Hulk also takes this one. I mean, look at this boy. What in tarnation is he on? He was able to punch things up to 300 miles per hour on barefoot, but his most impressive ability is his capability to cover over a mile in a single jump, spending only 8 seconds off the ground, meaning he clocks in at over 450 miles per hour. Dude would kill it in my track squad, but all I can do is dream. The other troll was able to move across great distances too. He went from Hero to Zanero to Guatemala within 10 hours. Sorry if I butchered that name. That's a distance of 6,682 kilometers, making this Hulk move at about 415 miles per hour. But that is still slightly less than that of Eric Bana's Hulk. The greener looking ogre wins the point here. Bruce Banner is most well known for his nerdiness and awkwardness. But what about the Hulk? 
Well, the MCU Hulk actually grew to use things around his environment. Like the car he uses as two hoagies against that thing that looks like the Berserker from Gears of War, the ground he smashed to disarm that same anorexic meathead, and the thunderclap he used to save his crush who makes his sap rise. The other one, on the other hand, spits a rocket out like a mommy bird and screeches underwater. Don't get me wrong, doing that with the rocket did show some sign of thinking, but it wasn't such an intelligent thing to do, especially since explosives like this do hurt him. One could bring up the point that this Hulk could at least say tiny sentences, but Thor Ragnarok has come out now, and Ruffalo's Hulk legit carried on full conversations with Thor, with vocab far beyond that of any live-action Hulk before him. He also knew to aim for the weak spot during the Hulkbuster fight, and fought well with equipment during the gladiator matches in Ragnarok. The 2003 Hulk came off more as a giant baby, using the top half of a tank like you would when you rage with your controller in Overwatch, and punching water like what was he trying to do? I get that the Avengers Hulk does indeed act like a giant toddler too, but that's when he's just having normal convos. When it's time to brawl, dude gets down and dirty and straight up uses environmental objects to his advantage. This one doesn't use objects that often. He's not very resourceful. I mean sure he does utilize a tree branch like a Lincoln log against the Gamma Dogs, but he doesn't ever think of chucking one of those things like 420 meters away like he did with the tank. He doesn't seem to think very well under that much physical pressure. So I probably have to give this one to the orangutan looking one. Endurance, as well as durability, is the amount of damage one can take before succumbing to the pain and opening that door that separates you from the light. This is probably the hardest section to judge. But you didn't click on this video for a draw, so I'm bound to pull something out of my ass. The Hulk in the MCU withstood combos to the face by Mjolnir and survived multiple destructive punches from the Hulkbuster armor. Of which Rhett Allen, an associate professor in physics and author of the science blog Dot Physics, concludes that those jabs could exert about 20,000 newtons of force. He also ate crap when Tony used an elevator car like a nunchuck. Though, Banas did fall from the top of Earth's atmosphere all the way to the ocean, and at that point is gonna feel like concrete. But this one too gets boosted from a high drop zone by an exploding jet to the actual cement, and again in Age of Ultron when the multi-ton Hulkbuster armor goes ham on the big guy through a 10-story building with steel beams. And both of them only looked utterly pissed off afterwards. Like the kind of pissed off you get when you're trying to put in the USB flash drive and it doesn't go in, so you flip it and it still doesn't go in, only to realize you had it upright the first time. Ruffalo's character seemed a little weaker as he actually got knocked out, but that doesn't really seem like a valid argument as he was calmed down by the crying bloody people. You could clearly see when he first came out of the rubble, he was ready to go for round two. But he withdrew from that rage as he saw all the destruction and havoc he caused. Saying that this Hulk should lose the point here because of that is like saying that the 2003 Hulk should lose in the endurance section because the power of spontaneous erections got him on his knees. That's unfair and irrational. Another thing nerdherds love to bring up is that Eric Bana's Hulk endured the power of a nuclear bomb and made it out alive. But according to the official novelization of the movie, this just isn't true. The text suggests that well before the nuke hit, Bruce Banner was already in his human state, not his Hulk form. How his skin wasn't burning from the newly nuked burning surface water is beyond me. But it's heavily implied that the water separating him from the explosion shielded Banner from the blast. Again, in case you are hard of hearing, that was Bruce Banner, not the Hulk. This Hulk did not get hit by a nuclear bomb. He was in his human form when it hit, and the water he was underneath most likely shielded him from the blast. So either way you look at this, it still wouldn't count as an endurance feat. The Mythbusters also support this idea that water can protect you from some explosions in their episode Dive to Survive. But anyways, now let's get back to what we know for sure they've endured. Banas Hulk was able to take quite a beating from three six-foot gamma-infused dogs, whereas Norton Ruffalo's actually got pounded by the Abomination, a guy who had a dose of Captain America's Super Soldier Serum with the addition of the already jacked up steroids the Hulk was infused with. Comparing these two very different scenarios is like comparing apples to oranges. But in a fight between these two, I think the one that actually had taken hits from super buffed up beings like himself gets the victory. Listen, those bites look ferocious. Like if I were in that situation, I would have accepted my fate as soon as that doge went for the Christmas bells. But the durability between these guys are like on two different levels. The only other fight where the 2003 Hulk is fighting a superhuman is when he fights his mama's baby daddy. But the Absorbing Man never once throws a jab or attempts to boot upon his son into the second dimension. All he ever did was drain him of his powers. So really, this monstrous looking thing has never felt what a real punch feels like. Yeah, he can take hits from a dog, but so can this one! In Ragnarok, the green dude took on a 20 foot wolf that's an enemy of the gods. Sure, it had no gamma in its blood, but in the original source material, Fenris had super strength for his size. Meaning if there ever were wolves the same size as him, he'd be able to bench press them as they were bench pressing bench presses. On top of that, 
Hulk ate a full-powered Super Saiyan God Punch from an enraged Thor in Ragnarok, and it resulted in a catastrophic shockwave. There aren't exact numbers for how powerful that super jab was, but remember, Hulk's 2000 ton punch didn't even have any kind of shockwave that preceded it. So however powerful Thor was at that moment, it's safe to say that it was well above 2000 tons of force. And Hulk just got up seconds later from it. That's more force than the other Hulk has ever exerted. Additionally, Banna's Hulk gets literally cut here by an explosion that didn't even touch him, but in 2008 this one damn near ate the fire. Plus, if you only got dog bites on you, while the other guy got nailed by a godly hammer, was beaten brutally by literally another Hulk who's on even more steroids than himself, and was swatted by a 1000 foot fire demon, well I'm sorry, but I'd have to say the one walking out of godly confrontations deserves the check mark here. Here is the scoreboard and end results. Eric Banna's Hulk is clearly a much bigger monster with more abilities, but he isn't very experienced when it comes down to fighting other big sized opponents. While the 2003 Hulk can chuck things pretty far and has a pretty swell healing factor, he doesn't seem like he's ever done a lot of actual punching or kicking. Low key always looking like a toddler. Really, his lack of experience is what gives the other Hulk the edge in this matchup. Ruffalo's Hulk proves that he has punches with much more force, unique fighting styles that incorporate environmental objects pretty well, and the durability to go toe to toe with another Hulk sized creature. I'm not understating the fact that the old Hulk took heavy bites from monster dogs, but the reality is that the MCU Hulk stood against gods and fire demons from other worlds. And I haven't even touched on fighting speed yet. The Ang Lee Hulk does indeed run faster, but what those hands do though? The other one can move his hands at a much faster rate if need be. To create a sonic boom like Norton Ruffalo's did in 08, they'd have to move their fists faster than the speed of sound. With that much force and speed, it's clear who the winner should be. His healing factor could prolong the fight, but it doesn't do so well against other Gamma monsters. Legit, he was ready to pass out like he was on a Mancini's Sleep World mattress. This one's tough, but it's only a matter of time before the 2000 ton punches start taking a toll on the big one. There's a reason why one Hulk was shown capable of beating another Hulk, and the other one wasn't. The winner is the Marvel Cinematic Universe Incredible Hulk. What the hell? Who should be up on the next Versus video? Let me know down in the comment section below. Anyways y'all, that's all the time I got for today. If you like this video, then be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Also, consider following me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And for more of my videos, just click right here.